Welcome back to Ground Up Guts, everybody. Spring has sprung here on the homestead, and we are ready to start setting up a garden. And we can't plant outside directly yet, but we can get ready. We're going to set up everything from the viewpoint of pest control. We're going to use physical boundaries, such as this fencing and uh, netting to pro put over rows of like broccoli, cauliflower. We're going to plant beneficial habitat for uh, predatory bugs. We're going to set up bird baths uh, for to bring in some birds. They're going to fertilize and eat uh, the bugs that want to eat our vegetables. Okay, there we go. 50 feet long, 30 feet wide. That should be good enough for a garden. And six foot tall, that's gonna keep out deer and goats. This is bedding material for the, uh, the ghosts that overwintered on. Um, when they have kids, we'll bring them in, put them in a pen, and um, it's already decomposing. Now, it has a lot of manure in it, which uh, goat manure is similar to rabbit manure. It's a really cool nitrogen, not high nitrogen, so you can plant right in it. So it's not now, notice over here we're not we're not going to till up this grass this is going to be no-till gardening no-till gardening this grass will um, it's gonna be on the very bottom like a lasagna like a lasagna gardening um, now this is going to decompose this grass will decompose right in place and be more organic material and which will is going to um, hold water and nutrients as it decomposes for uh, the young roots of the, our vegetables to, to tap right into. And yeah, there's some, some seeds in the, in the hay that's in this because um, goats are just messy eaters. Uh, the hay seeds I'm not concerned about because it's going to be under other layers in the lasagna garden and they should be no problem. layer of organic material down here and we're going to cover this up with cardboard you can see I've got one cut in half lengthwise and another cut in half uh, across the width of it because I want to I want to overlap these and uh, shingle them and I want two layers Now the cardboard acts as a sunblock and a weed barrier, so I'm not really concerned about any of these weed seeds and the hay popping up through this cardboard. 
especially when it's two layers thick. So we're two layers thick here at the back. The seam in the first sheet, the half sheet, is here, and the seam in the sheet cut half this way is here. So none of the seams are going to line up. So in the past, everywhere I've had a, a, a gap develop in cardboard when you're walking on it before it really soaks and mats down, if that pops open, some of this grass can try to grow back up through it, or some of these seeds can grow back up through that crack. If you're double layers and none of the seams overlap, your odds of, you're really going to minimize how much weeding you have to do later. later. It's a, we got this, oh boy, last spring, so it's at least a year old. The plant, I'm not going to plant directly in that wood mulch. I'll pull the, after it's rained a couple of times, I'm going to pull that wood mulch, mulch back and the cardboard, I'll cut a hole in, dig a, dig a hole big enough for my plant, but it's a little bit bigger, uh, put some compost in that put my plant in the compost and plant it and then pull the wood mulch back not not quite to the plant you don't want the wood mulch touching touching the plant as it takes root and takes off and the biggest piece of advice I can give you about sheet mulching is this stuff takes a tremendous amount of material I'm, every time I put it down, every single time I put it down, I am amazed at how much material it takes. It's really easy to underestimate that. Okay, this is exactly what I mean by shingled. They were two layers deep, and they go on just like roof shingles. So, that should give me plenty of weed barrier. I might want to kick this one down a little bit. Yeah, make sure I have two good layers, and I'll uh, I'll just chop them. I wanted you to know how much how much uh, labor is involved in putting down sheet mulch, and how much material. There used to be a pile of wood mulch over there. There used to be a pile of wood mulch right here, and this is uh, what's left of about half a pile. There's a truckload and there is a truckload. These, these loads are like uh, my buddy Dwayne's truck is probably got a 20 foot bed on it, um, six foot side walls, and uh, during tree trimming he will bring me a load maybe once every other month. So this is a lot of wood mulch. And the summer's on and I got a well this is uh, late spring. It's time to start planting in the garden, and the garden, still, all of the sheet mulch isn't down yet, so it's time to just get to work. <coughs> you can see, I want to point out, we have every size that's not going to hurt a thing big pieces right down to sawdust medium size medium size it's not all one size because obviously this is going to break down a lot faster than this this won't hurt a thing um, what's nice about wood again it will it will lock up twice its weight in water. So when you have a hot, dry summer, 
every time you get rain, lock up all that water and it's not going to run off. I have a, a friend of mine in town made a comment on another video that I've got all kinds of fertilizer for you. Now I'm going to go pick some up in the trailer. I'm going to bring it home, but by the time I get there and come back, um, the clock's just ticking away on getting the garden in. If I don't get it in, we're not going to get any produce. So I'm going to go ahead and sheet mulch this, plant it, and go get the load of fertilizer. And if it's if it turns up and it's, it's uh, decomposed enough, I'm going to just mix it up with some dirt and put my plants in with it. We can finally start planting. Okay. What you definitely need to know about sheet mulch is you do not plant in the wood. You do not, not plant in the wood. The wood is straight carbon. It's uh, just not going to grow the plants. Cut a hole, cut a hole in your cardboard. And you plant in the dirt. And what are we planting? Um, I believe this is summer squash. If I can get it out of there. Yep, tomato. Uh, very leggy tomato. <laughs> very leggy tomato. Nice. Now this is why we started with uh, an organic layer of the straw and manure under the cardboard because that is what this little summer squash is going to feed on. trap water so all of this fantastic rain we've been getting will keep my garden nice and wet because I'm expecting a dry summer now I'll uh, I'll bring in some more compost and fill this up but as much as much moisture as this is going to get um, I planted it just a little bit high I'll fill this up with compost and I might pull the mulch up around it a little bit but I don't want mulch on touching this skin at all or it's going to rot off and that's that's planting in sheet mulch and I hope these storms don't beat it up too bad but we'll see